Hello and welcome to the start of the 2020 Utica Home Track Series. After five long years on hiatus, we're finally ready to refire the engines and get a new season on the road. The 2020 season brings a number of changes as the series aims to get back to its roots. A nine race schedule mainly covering the American Northeast will feature three short tracks, three dirt tracks and three road courses to test driver's skill. Grid sizes and race lengths have also been scaled back. Only 25 cars will qualify for each feature race, with the points awarded from 25 to 1 based on finishing position and a few bonus points up for offer. Speaking of qualifying, on the ovals, heats and NLCQ will narrow down the field and set the starting grid for each of the races, and on road courses, a single 15-minute group qualifying session will do the same. New to this season is the Specialist Cup Championship. Ten drivers will attempt the three races in the preferred discipline and try to accumulate the most points by season's end. We're live at Jennerstown Speedway for the first round of the season. This paved oval measures in at just over a half mile in length, with six degrees of banking on the straights and nine in the corners. The low banking transition and the wide nature of this track makes it a real racer's racetrack and the ideal venue to kick off the season. Heat race number one coming onto the track now is Annie Thomas is going to lead him to, down to the green flag as she is the 2014 season champion. The starting grid for these uh, heat races will be determined by point standings and since there was no previous race in the 2020 season, we're going all the way back to 2014 to determine the grid. Only the top seven starters have competed in the Utica Home Track Series before all the rest determined just by alphabetical order with Tyler Faber and Trey Wright having the most to gain here. Only the top 10 will make it into the feature race directly with another five transferring from the LCQ. Green flag is out. Andy Thomas and John Cittadino leading them down to the green flag to begin the first of the 15 lap heat races of the opening round of the 2020 season. That is Matt Evans looking to the inside of John Cittadino. Cittadino already in the wall and that's going to stack him up three and four wide back behind around fifth place or so. Thomas out to an early lead and will lead lap number one. Jeffrey Fingai in the number 92. That bright white, blue and red number 92 is in second. Is there three wide there? With That's Nonico and the 77 of Angel Navarro racing hard for position. Up top is uh, Matt Duell in the 88. Longtime competitor and John Cittadino continues to fall backwards in the number 72. He's having a rough go really struggling with the handling of that race car, but Navarro off to a good start all, all the way up to third as things stand. That's Tyler Thaver in the 89, still mixing it up three wide. These guys need to settle down and pick off positions as quickly as possible. Doesn't give you a whole lot of time in these 15 lap races to get it done, but Thaver started from the back row pretty much, and he's all the way up into the top 10 at this point. On board John Cittadino through the chaos here. Joe Petruccelli getting very loose in the number 14 Fortino's machine. He will get that thing saved and John Cittadino had to get on the brakes a little bit there to uh, avoid any contact with that rookie. Jeffrey Fingai trying for the lead now, getting pushed through by Daniel Boyles. Boyles finished 118th in points back in 2014. He's now a short track specialist and it appears that he's chosen the right discipline because he is sitting in second place right behind the experienced Jeffrey Finguy. Finguy holding on to the lead for now. Boyles peeks down low, peeking again into the corner. Finguy tries to shove him down. He can't get there. Uh, and Boyles is through in the number 26. Got a full car length advantage. One lap later, Finguy trying again on Boyles. Up the inside, Boyles pushes him down to the yellow line, trying to break any momentum that Finguy can get off the corner. Finguy's still there, still there, down into three. Boyles using this sweeping, uh, a sweeping outside line to keep hold of the advantage over Finguy, and he will keep it for now. Now back to Annie Thomas. Annie Thomas racing alongside Casey Nanako. Oh my goodness, Annie Thomas very, very loose. In the number 23, she's got that car saved, but she's under intense pressure from the number 67 of Alexander Rowe and Matt Duell in the 88 Mountain Dew machine. Now looking to almost go three wide here as Nanako rides the outside. Thomas comes up the track into Nanako. Nanako down into Rowe. Rowe back up the track in front of the field. And we've got a big pileup coming down into turn three. Thomas 
gets through unscathed somehow. Now looking looking at a replay of Alexander Rowe as he gets hit by Casey Nonico. Matt Evans, Baranowskis, Davidson, Citadino, and others all collected in this one. And it's going to be uh, a war of attrition here of which of the damaged cars can keep going and which of the damaged cars can finish the race inside the top 10. Audra Baranowskis smoking heavily out of the front of that Chevy. She's going to need to go to a backup car for the LCQ. Petrucelli, Evans, and Davidson all into the pits. Only Davidson would retire. The other two would come back out. Nanako still going despite the some of the damage that he got from clipping row. But just a couple of laps later, Nanako up in smoke. Despite the crash, Nanako was still sitting in a transfer position when that happened. And he, like many others, is going to have to go to the LCQ. Daniel Voyles just got the white flag, the number 26. Grounding turns one and two right now, getting very, very close to the wall on the exit of two. But overall, once Voyles got into a rhythm, he could not be stopped. He pulled away from Fingai and the rest of the field, and he now cruises to the first heat win of the season. Three quarters of a lap back, though, is the battle for the last transfer spot between a few damaged cars. That's John Cittadino sitting ninth, Tyler Faber and Chris Dodd racing hard for the 10th spot. Faber blocks low, and he's going to hold him off as Faber grabs the 10th and final transfer spot, and Chris Dodd's going to have some uh, teams going to have some work to do. Uh, to get that car prepared for the LCQ. Taking a look at the finishing results, Finguy and Duel were the best of the full-timers, as Voiles and Smart, both of the Specialist Cup drivers, made it into the feature event. Chris Dodd, Petrucelli, Evans, Nonico, Davidson, and Baranowskis all to the LCQ. A lot of those teams are going to either have to swap uh, their car out for their backup car or really get the hammers going as the Heat 2 drivers head onto the track now. Heading out on pole is Nicholas Guerra with Trek Togger to his outside. Past champion William Duncan lines up third with Canadian driver Sean Angel to his outside. Ernesto and Fitzwater Sr. round out the drivers with past Utica Home Track Series starts. Kyle Schock Jr. in the Motocraft number 21 is the only Specialist Cup driver in the field. Look for him to make big moves to try and get in and stay in the top 10. Pace car down the pit lane, waiting on the track marshal for the green flag. And there it is. Nicholas Guerra gets a very slow start on the inside track. Togger trying to get around him on the outside. But the short way around is the fast way around here at Jennerstown as Guerra slides up to the outside in front of Trek Togger to take the lead, but Duncan already lunging down to the inside with help from Ernesto, and Duncan will lead lap one. Ernesto trying to follow Duncan through as the six of Guerra desperately trying to get down to the inside. That's Austin LaPlante leading the charge now on the inside. Kyle Shock Jr. has already made his way up from 13th to cracking the top five with this pass on Eugene DeMax. That Ford is on the move, and he's proving that he's got the talent to compete with the best in the series. Now looking underneath Nicholas Guerra for fourth as someone got sideways. Oh, that was Zach Winkle in the number 97. He started at the very tail end of the field, 16th place, and he's been making moves, although it's been pretty obvious lately that uh, stability is a bit of a concern for him. At this rate, though, at least he'll be one to watch on the dirt tracks. Sean Angel getting caught up behind him as the field stacks up. Angel into the wall, crashed it through in the midline as Winkle desperately trying to stay inside the top 10. Now looking at Guerra as he fights LaPlante to stay inside the top 5. It's a big safety net, but uh, man, it's not too safe when you're out sliding around quite like that. A great save by Nicholas Guerra. Started on pole this race. Doesn't seem to have the speed to stay there, but he'll continue in the top five for now. The front part of the field is starting to space out and desperation is starting to kick in among those outside the top 10. Taylor Brian Price and Togger are currently going for the final transfer spot with Patrick Smith, Orman, Winkle, Angel, and Krast are currently on the outside looking in. Back up front, William Duncan nearly has a full straightaway advantage as neither Onesto nor anyone else has managed to keep up. 
Duncan appears to be right back to championship form and is laying down an absolute stomping on the competition right now. Nathan Orman is now inside the top 10. His background comes not from stock cars, but actually from rally racing, participating in the short-lived Utica Dirt Devil series. He's trying to put some more cars between him and the transfer spot. He's going on a move on Eugene DeMax, who's side by side with Zachary Fitzwater, but Orman loses control of the car after getting into DeMax. Angel just squeaks through, Togger through as well as no one willing to get on the brakes particularly heavily. It's far too late in the event for that. And this one mistake is going to cost Orman a shot at direct transfer. Incredibly, Kyle Schock Jr. has grabbed second and is the only car on track that can keep up with Duncan. Behind them, LaPlante, Guerra, and Ernesto are putting on a show for the final podium spot. LaPlante and Guerra worked the, bo worked the bottom there uh, as Ernesto fell back to fifth. Now trying to get an advantage through the midline here as Guerra squeezes up to the outside and Ernesto gets into the side of Guerra. He caught him in a weird spot out of turn number two and had nowhere to go. And that is catastrophic for Ernesto who loses what would have been a top 10 starting spot in the main event and will now have to fight his way in through the LCQ because there is the white flag. William Duncan down the backstretch for the final time. He's led all 15 laps of this heat race and he's going to come around to take the checkered flag as he wins his heat and secures pole by setting a faster lap than heat one winner Daniel Boyles. It was Sean Angel who was the lucky recipient of Joseph Ernesto's spin, moving up from 11th into the final transfer spot. In front of him, Taylor Brian Price and Jack Halleck settled their battle for the 8th spot on the final corner of the event. Looking at the final results, all three short track specialists that showed up to the event made it into the main through the heats, and I think just that goes to show the quality of the specialists that we'll see in the other categories as well. A quiet charge from Patrick Smith put him fifth place at the end of that event. And in a bit of an upset, longtime series competitors Trek Togger and Joseph Ernesto will have to battle their way through the LCQ alongside Zach Winkle, Nathan Ormond, and Brandon Crasta. Now it's time for the LCQ. 11 drivers, 10 laps, top 5 transfer. The repaired Chris Dodd starts in front in the front row alongside pole man Zach Winkle, who is very unsteady in his heat race. Trek Togger starts third. He couldn't find speed in his heat, and Joseph Petrucelli's crew did a phenomenal job to be the front end out, out enough to reattach the hood. Matt Evans' crew also had to do a rebuild to get him on track for this race. Nonico showed a lot of speed, but the team ended up having to replace the motor after that exploded following the contact in heat number one. Zayden Davidson and Lithuanian Audra Baranowskis will round out the lineup. They both had to go to backup cars. Green flag is out. It's a pretty even start, but Dodd stuck on the outside, and Petrucelli is not taking any prisoners. Sends it three wide immediately down into turn number one. Chris Dodd losing positions like crazy as Trek Togger is glued to the bottom of the track. Petrucelli continuing his onslaught here, trying to take advantage of his second chance as he dives to the bottom and a follow Togger through. Top four with a little bit of a breakaway as they check up behind him. Matt Evans is currently in the final transfer spot. He's gonna have he has a hungry group of drivers behind him to hold off though. Winkle still stuck on the outside and losing spots. Chris Dodd is up at the top of the track, right up against the wall and sliding all over the place alongside uh, Casey Nonico. Uh, the Season 4 Utica Rallycross Champions transfer to stock cars has been a very popular one. There aren't any local drivers in the field tonight to sway the crowd, but it's clear that Dodd already has a cult following. Despite his flamboyance out there on the track, he's on his way to the tail of the field and is alongside Zane Davidson for 10th place. Trek Togger still trying to hold off Joseph Petrucelli for the lead. Petrucelli looking down low. Togger can hold so much speed uh, into the corners. They were both sideways out of two, but Petrucelli's mid drive is just second and none. You can see him pull away from second and third place Togger and Orman there and he's off to the races now got a few car lengths advantage over his fellow competitors Matt Evans just got overtaken by Audra Baranowskis but he continues to hold on to that final transfer spot crashed into the wall off too 
Evans' car is good but not great and he can't quite get it, keep it planted on the bottom of the track. Another look at Prast's wall hit off of two. Just got a little too aggressive with the throttle. A finer touch will come with time, but any chassis damage to sustain may kill any last chance he had at making the main event as he falls all the way to the rear of the pack. Winkle just inches off of Evans trying to get something going on the inside. Evans' experience with these cars might just pay off as he continues to defend the position. Zach Winkle's lack of momentum allowed Nanako to interrupt the battle and head to sixth and Nanako might be a bigger threat to Evans. He's running, he was running in the top five in his heat until trouble struck and he's already up the inside of Matt Evans. Evans drove in too deep into turn one, got up into the marbles and lost a lot of ground. He's back under threat from Winkle now. How about Audra Baranowskis? Coming with a backup car from the 11th and final spot on the grid to fighting for third place alongside Trek Togger. I'm sure it's been an exciting and stressful first event for her, making the transition from her road racing background to the short tracks of the Northeast. Despite the odds, she's in a good position to transfer into the main. Starting his final lap now is Joseph Petruccelli, who looked incredibly determined right out of the gate in this race. He made some big moves and sliced through the field despite starting on the traditionally disadvantaged outside line. And once he got to the front, he stayed there. On to the final lap. Nanako currently holds the fifth spot, but is a challenging Trek Togger for insurance. Togger will be stuck up high into three and four, it looks like, and he might lag out mid corner, dealing with the marble. Zach Winkle with one final charge, but Togger with a good run off the corner to hold uh, Winkle off and make it into the field. With that, the field of 25 is set. And so your top five scraped their way into the main event, but some big names missed it. Matt Evans and Joseph Ernesto both miss it. Zach Winkle came one spot short in both his heat and his LCQ just to miss it. And Davidson, Dodd, and Krasta will all be packing up as well, and we'll have to try again at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park for round two. The drivers and teams now get a brief break to regroup and let the officials set the grid for the main event. Go grab a drink and some snacks and head over to the Utica Home Track Series channel to catch all the action from the Jennerstown main event.